All right, everyone. It is me, Johnson Chan. And yes, the audio appears to be plugged in because I see the OBS bar is going off. Well, I guess I was really out of my element yesterday, but I think that was my first video after getting back from the hospital, so I guess maybe that's why. Physically, I'm definitely feeling much better, and the stupid skin rashes are going away. So, just a couple more days, I suppose. Alright, so this video is coming out a little later than normal, because uh, you know, I actually woke up around 7-10 a.m. And, uh, you know, I was just doing some catch-up, playing my games, of course, and then, uh, you know, doing some basic research. Because I'm still a little confused about what's going on, but I think I, I think I, for now, have figured it out. So, first off, it's going to be very annoying. And the thing I actually want to show is actually this. Um, actually, you want to read this. It says, consolidations are noise, stick to your plan. And I'm going to have to click over here. Uh, where can I find it? Yeah, this is the one. So, daily reminder, there are no bullish signs yet, and the bounces have no volume. New lows are likely in just a matter of time. Well, the problem is, how long do we have to wait, and what's going to trigger it? Now, technically, this is kind of true, because the 24-hour volume on coin market cap is still very low. So, he's not wrong, right? Crypto capital is not wrong. And he does want to go bullish, right? Crypto capital here. But he's, uh, no... No signs yet. All right. Yeah. Bulls when I finally flip uh, bullish. Keep hitting like and bulls, which is actually true. All right. So had I actually uh, followed Richard Hart and this capo guy, I would have been like, oh, you mean we're actually hitting the peak already? Oh, then I would have sold all my sphere at like 11 cents or 10 cents or whatever it was at that point. Right, buy my condo all cash, and then all this crap would have happened, and then I just would be so much better off. So, you know, and that goes for any other my other crypto projects. Hmm. So it's important to, uh, as Richard Hart says, to keep it updating and expanding your worldview because things do actually change. He didn't say the word context, but context always changes. That's why it's so important. All right, you know. What worked yesterday doesn't mean it works today. And then when that happens, maybe what used to not work does actually work later in the future. All right. You know, Trump's a good example of this. Right. Running around, acting like a huge asshole. Right. In 2016. Great. You know, I supported that. We all did. Right. Mike Sinovich did. You know, got what we wanted. Well, the problem was he just kind of kept doing that. All right. And it was just stupid and retarded. All right, and then now we have the mess that we have now, all right? Because you know Trump could not update his worldview, right? And then now that stupid idiot's gonna probably be uh, president in 2024. You know, my personal preference is still Ron DeSantis because you know he's actually not a stupid idiot. He's actually the complete opposite, right? But you know, predict it. Uh, actually, what does predict it say? Predict it 2024 POTUS. Because Ron was way ahead of Trump. Okay. Oh, and then now it's actually evened out again. Yeah. This Because Ron, for some weird reason, after the Roe v. Wade decision, Trump like sank to like 24 cents. Okay, so it's still about even. Okay. All right, well, this is like a million years away anyway. Okay, so based on what I've been observing, right, and what I've already covered in yesterday's video... All right, commodity prices, for example, are still very low. They're up today, you know, an okay amount, but that's because if you look at the previous trends, I mean, it's basically going straight down. So there's got to be a dead cat bounce. Now, hopefully, this is not a bottom and it's going to go much higher than we're than we're actually really screwed. Uh, so, so there's a couple of things. The next GDP update is on July 7th, so that's tomorrow. All right, because today is Wednesday. Blah, okay. I'm so paranoid about the audio. I'm going to replay the video back just, you know, just look real briefly, all right, just 10 seconds to make sure I can hear my own voice here. So what I'm thinking ultimately is going to happen is if I'm right and uh, the commodity price is coming down, especially in June, will show up very quickly, 
in the June CPI report that comes on July 13th, which is next week, right? I believe that's next Wednesday. Yes, that's next Wednesday. Then, because CPI is coming in lower than 8.6%, because that's the con uh, consensus, so basically it comes in lower than expected, I actually expect things to rip higher, all right? Because in June, when they released the May CPI report, right, it came in higher than expected, and the market's tanked. So, you know, and ultimately it is about inflation, all right? Because why does the Fed have to raise interest rates? Because of inflation, right? Why is NASDAQ uh, getting hammered? Because of inflation, right? Simply because higher inflation means higher interest rates, which means, like Greg Manorino says, NASDAQ and tech stocks, and of course, therefore, cryptocurrencies, are very interest rate sensitive, right? And then at the end of this month, we have the FOMC meeting on July 27th, and then the day after is the actual formal GDP report, right? Uh, it's the, it's the uh, second quarter first estimate, right? The initial uh, estimate. Maybe, that's should, maybe I should call it the initial uh, uh, estimate to make it less confusing sounding. So we have like back to back crazy, we have like crazy news this month. So once we get, I mean, it depends on what people believe, right? But I think the fake news media is still telling everyone, at least based on what I'm seeing from Twitter, that. You know, recessions later this year, recessions next year, right? But when the news drops that, oh, we're in a recession right now, uh, I'm thinking that should tank the markets. So theoretically, this would go up. Crypto should go up between now and the 13th. And then assuming CPI inflation comes down on the 13th when it's reported, July 13th, uh, I should expect things to go higher because everyone's think, oh, you know, inflation's peaking, right? So... I don't know. It's, it's just going to be very annoying to deal with this, right? Because there is a reason why trade value on crypto is still very low, right? There's, you know, like Crypto Capital says, and I've, I, I've seen this too, like 24-hour value is still low. It's literally the middle of Wednesday, right? Everyone's back from vacation from July 4th, right? People wanted to buy Wall Street and smart money. This thing would be like $84 billion or higher or whatever, right? If it was a buying frenzy, it'd definitely be like 100 and 125 billion, right? This 24 hour volume. But it's not. It's actually the same volume as if it's the weekend. So, what does that mean? Yeah, they're deliberately holding back on crypto. So, I'm definitely enjoying the slight increase in prices because I've been, you know, I've been trying to figure out what I want to do with BNB Miner, right? You know, I've been doing full withdrawals because I don't know if it's TVL is draining, but so far I've been recording uh, it for like the past few days, and it actually does keep going up, just not as fast. So I think for now I'm going to go back to my old, hmm, excuse me, 12, uh, 50 percent compound, 50 percent take profit. So basically every 12 hours, you know, I alternate, right, just to maintain TVL. That's not too bad. I mean, I think I make like. 115 bucks a day just off of that alone and then once I feel uh, Titano is building up to it because I'm not gonna say how much Titano I have but I have a lot now um, you know that that can supplement me and then I'll still be okay financially but <sighs> so if saving 50k I need to save 250 grand oh this is just a uh, what a headache all right so it looks like the bonds are actually being bought up so I don't think these numbers are large enough to indicate central banks manipulating the debt market. I think this is actual people buying uh, the U.S. debt market. That's just my opinion. All right, uh, and it's already pretty low. The Fed knows that and the ECB knows that. You know, the more debt they buy and manipulate, the higher these balance sheets are going to go, and then they're going to have like real problems with inflation. So they really don't want that. And like I said in yesterday's video. Because they bought so much debt at a higher interest rate, now those bonds that the central banks bought are worth a lot of money. All right, definitely more than what they paid for. Right now that these interest rates are down, so the Fed and central banks can actually dump it on the open market, and people will act real money will actually buy it. That's the ideal situation, right? I just call it delevering the system, right? Provides real liquidity, you know. Uh, lowers their balance sheet, right, and more importantly, it reduces the amount of manipulation. So that's how these, uh, you know, things work. And it's like, 
it, to be honest, it's actually quite impressive. It is quite impressive to me. Like, it's quite impressive. I don't know how, how else to describe it. Which makes me wonder, yeah, maybe fiat really is the superior monetary system, right? For all its flaws, I mean, I can't imagine anyone else doing the same thing, right? Because recessions and depressions used to happen before we had central banking and fiat, right? When we had a gold and silver based system, right? They just happened to be very severe, apparently. That's why a lot of people at the time, right? Because I didn't actually know this, in 19... In 1910, after we had like yet another recession or depression, people were like, you know what, let's just have a central bank, right? And that's why the 1913 Federal Reserve Act finally passed, all right, along with a bunch of other stupid crap, right? But here's the thing, regardless of your monetary system, you're, you, it seems like you always have a recession and a depression anyway. Why? Because there's greed and fear. People buy up a bubble, right? The most classic one is the one... Uh, the South Sea bubble or the tulip mania bubble, right, in 1619. So, like, almost 400 years ago or whatever, right, 403 years ago. My God, that's a lot of time, 403 years. <sighs> boy, I pr boy, we really have come a long way since then, right? Even back then, they still had depressions and manias and, you know, recessions and whatever. So ultimately, maybe it just doesn't really matter, right? It's, it's just it's just how us humans are. We want to buy everything up, and then we want to sell and crash it, all right? You know, so it's just a matter of which is the best way of managing it, so that you know when the crashes do come, it doesn't like screw up uh, too many things, all right? All right. So anyway, it looks like stock futures are like slightly lower, kind of flattish. You know, there's just Again, there's just no real news to work with. Maybe when the GDP estimate comes out tomorrow, right, by GDP now, maybe that might move things, right? But for now, from what I can tell, yeah, I really don't know about shorting. I mean, we could, but there's just too many contradictory variables to deal with right now. It's like I need some more clarity in the market. So for now... I'm still holding my preferred stock, right, JP Morgan C-Class. In fact, I've made an $0.08 cent profit on it because I bought it for $25.66 or $67, all right? I, I'm not going to touch that, though. Uh, what I might do is I might sell it when the Federal Reserve has to start lowering interest rates, all right? Now, if JP Morgan's uh, preferred stock goes below 25 because the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates like crazy, then I actually might buy more uh, of the stock, right? And then sell it back when, you know, interest rates have to start coming back down. So that's how I'm going to play the, the short. Because the problem with SPDN and really shorting the market is I don't really get much dividend income, right? And I have to hold it. And on top of that, you know, if it turns out that we, you know, we hit the bottom, because that's always a possibility, well, then these, uh, these short uh, ETFs are going to be worth, like, a lot less money. So right now I just want to preserve my capital. So I kept, I have to really thank Chuck Barone for mentioning preferred stock because I completely forgot about preferred stock. So I've already done so many videos on shorting the market. So maybe I have to make another video about how to get defensive. You know, ah oh, man, I don't know. I'll think, I'll think about it because I think that is a pretty important topic. All right. So preferred stocks. All right, and then I'll explain it more. All right, so for the most part, I don't really care what the stock markets do today, all right? You know, and if the central banks and the feds are, you know, buying up the U.S. stock market, I mean, we can't really stop them because, I don't know, this doesn't make sense. If stocks are going up, which means money is leaving the debt market, why is the debt market, you know, money flowing into the debt market? Okay, so maybe this is actually a little bit of manipulation too. So, I mean, without seeing what's happening... Yeah. All right. So anyway, I don't think crypto capital is going to be correct until July 27th and 28th. So that's literally the end of July. Uh, I just want to get this over with. But I would be willing to tolerate it if, you know, BNB, especially and Bitcoin are, you know, doing an okay price, right? Because then I can extract more money for my DeFi, right? For BNB miner and eventually Titano before everything starts crashing. Right? But he does, but Crypto Capital does say that once we hit Bitcoin 16K, he thinks we're going to go bullish. 
So that only that only leaves Richard Hart, right? Because he thinks Bitcoin is supposed to bottom around eleven thousand. So that's not much further down. Uh, but I don't know. We're just gonna have to see. <clears throat> you know, I probably won't be able to have a clear idea until after the uh, July twenty eighth uh, GDP report comes out. All right, and then I can also look at. Of course, we're definitely gonna keep track of commodities because I think this is the only way I can tell where the inflation is going. Right, is it going up or down? Right, before it actually hits the reports. Right, I personally would prefer that you know CNBC has more commodities here, especially like aluminum. Right, so supposedly an aluminum factory is, and I want to see lumber, aluminum. What do I? What should I put here? Futures prices. God, I really don't want like all of these extra tabs open. I'm just training economics. That's pretty good. Oh, hey, this could be pretty good. Oh, hey, this is oh, this is perfect. Okay, they have a list of shit here. Okay, so we got coal. Well, coal, I could, I think I no, no, we can leave coal out of this. I don't know about steel. I guess we could check steel, iron ore. This, this is just like my uh, video games. Lithium, platinum, HRC steel, palm, cheese, milk. No, these are derivatives of like other things. So, yeah, I especially wanted lumber. I want things especially related to like construction of like houses and skyscrapers and office buildings. I mean, I, I don't know too much about construction. Right? Even though I interest, even though ultimately I want to go into real estate investing. Um, okay, this site is much better than CNBC. I'll keep this page open just in case there's something listed here. Okay, so we'll do this and then I'll let you all go because this is actually where we're gonna make the money, or at least try to avoid losing money. Because right now I'm just in a very defensive position, and a lot of you probably are too. So what are, what's the time right now? 17.20. All right, I better wrap this up. Um, how do I zoom? Oh, okay. Uh, give me five here. All right, so we're seeing the same phenomenon too. All right, things peak and then they come down. Okay, so steel, April. So interestingly enough, in the month of May, steel has come down quite a lot already. Okay, see, this is really good info. Steel is obviously very important continues to go down so that's good so steel is lower in the five year what is this iron ore same story all right in fact it was much higher last year inflation wasn't too crazy yet uh, iron ore continues to spike spike and then finally is coming down okay so I can definitely say with confidence, assuming it shows up quickly enough, that I think the June 2022 CPI report is going to come in lower than expected, because people are thinking, because people are thinking the inflation will be 8.6% versus May's 8.3%. But when you look at the commodity prices for various commodities for June, everything basically went down. So how does that make sense? I think the CPI inflation should come in lower. Uh, okay, well, what is this? Lumber. Uh, give me a five years. All right, so wood is really crazy. Okay, so wood is like insane. It's like really expensive and then really low and then really expensive again and then really low. So it was declining since March, and then May, and then June is barely going up. All right, so lumber is a lot cheaper. That is insane. Lumber has had more. Well, I don't know why lumber is so volatile. Huh. Oh, uh, wool. Well, I guess we'll do one random one, and then we'll call it. The reason why I'm not looking at dairy products is because it comes from uh, cows. And cattle. So we already know cattle is still pretty expensive. So, hmm. Uh, wool. So sheep prices are essentially the same. Jeez. 
so it dipped during the COVID lockdowns, and then it's been kind of normal since. No, no real crazy change in wool. But, I mean, you don't really use wool for that much stuff, right? Or at least not in large quantities, so I guess this is okay. Huh, gasoline prices. I wish gas was like three thirty-five a gallon. I mean, it's like $6 a gallon here in New York City. It's actually... I actually haven't been. I actually have been just cooking my own food, real food. So I haven't been going to Burger King, so I haven't been passing by that gas station. Maybe I'll actually stop by the stop by there just look at the gas prices. It should be lower though. Okay. I I can't imagine how gas is four dollars a gallon where some places in America are. Yeah, and gas is down along with crude oil. So yeah, this makes sense. All right. So yeah, so we're gonna we so yeah, so yeah, I'm pretty confident about what I'm looking at here. Oh, did we ever look at aluminum? My original. Oh yeah, aluminum. Yeah, it's been crashing. It's been crashing a lot after peaking like crazy. Yeah, the inflation report's gonna come in lower than expected for sure. In fact, the if it if that's true and it's great and the gap is much lower than 8.6 percent. Oh yeah, forget about it. This shit's gonna take off uh, on that day. Media is going to go ballistic. They're going to say there was. So you see, there's nothing wrong with the American economy. We're the strongest, right? We're not Soviet Russia. We are, we are strong. You know, we're, we're strong. And it's just like, oh God, propaganda is just going to be nuts, right? And, and then, well, you know why? Whatever, shit goes up. Crypto better go up, right? And we could extract a little more money. And then, you know, we'll prepare for the end of this month. And then, I don't know. I guess we'll see what the what happens with uh, the interest rates. So far, mar free market. I don't think you have to pay money for this. Oh, look at that! They're pri they're starting to price in a smaller rate hike, which is 50 basis points. Ah, so it'll be interesting to see how this number will change on July 13th. All right, I've rambled on long enough. If you like, if you like what you saw, read, or heard, that's the old outro. Uh, like, subscribe, share this video. Uh, thank you again to all the uh, old and new subscribers, especially the new people. Uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, I don't know what video I'll do tomorrow. I actually thought today's video would be kind of short, but you know, I'm constantly learning, I'm constantly uh, evolving. You know, at this point, I just want to just keep, you know, doing new stuff, right? Because the best way to make more more money is to keep learning new things, right? And I'm definitely learning a lot, right? Especially because I have a huge motivation right now. I need to stockpile as much cash as I can, not only to buy a new like house or condo, but I need to avoid moving back in with my mom and dad because like I just can't have that let that happen. And it doesn't help that because I'm in New York City, I can't get a job because I need the vaccine. But I'm not going to take it, so I'm kind of screwed here. So I don't know. I guess we'll see. Uh, Alright, so I think I'll do a video tomorrow. If I don't really have anything productive to say tomorrow, I'll do the defensive uh, video tomorrow, but chances are I'll probably just do a stock video, so, you know, yeah, I mean, because these are actually pretty popular, so, thank you, by the way, for that, so, yeah, okay, all right, I'll let you all go, see you all, uh, tomorrow morning, and, uh, enjoy the rest of your day or night, and then, of course, check out Greg Manorino and Chuck Barone, because, you know, that's, uh, very good, important information that, even stuff I don't cover, right, but that's because they have access to info that I don't, so I just try to look at things from, a public, really big picture perspective and like, you know, uh, trying to predict the future kind of thing. So, yeah. Works for me. All right. See you all uh, tomorrow. Thanks.